we are back in Way the Hunter today with two things that have been a very long time coming. The first one is we finally have the 308 monoblock. I've been looking forward to getting this gun. Finally, we get to try it out today, and it's just, it's gotta be the best looking gun in the game. The wood grain on this rifle is just fantastic. But the other thing is, we're finally gonna go up into the Northwest and go and try to get the black bighorn sheep that is a mission animal. Now, I don't even think we need to do anything all that special to get to that. I believe it's the very first mission. So we'll fast travel over there. We do have the outpost unlocked, despite the fact that we haven't bought the area. I'm kind of considering trying to unlock this area just through missions, just as a little bit of something different to do. And we'll kind of see how that goes. But because I think we'll be able to do this fairly quickly, we may go and just test out the 308 on some other species. So normally had we not already picked up the paper, it would be laying here we'd get the information to go and do it. And I think I can, in the menu here, get the proper objective active. And I mean, look straightforward enough, harvest the black bighorn sheep, and especially aggressive bighorn who happens to have black wool. So we'll activate that. And as we head off here, the area is marked on our map, probably over a mile away, 1.1 miles in fact. We actually have switched today to the hunter difficulty. Now, I've actually heard that maybe the adventurer and hunter difficulties are switched, and this is actually going to be easier than what we've been dealing with. And I wanted to test that, and I think Bighorn are going to be a really good way to do so. So we'll start our one mile trek and see if we can get our second mission animal, as we did shoot Hollywood on stream this past week. I will say they did not exactly make this easy. We're on a Bighorn trail right now, and I'm assuming if we just kind of continue along the path, we're likely to find a zone that maybe they could be using, but we are well into the area and still no sign of anything at all other than a rarely used rest zone. However, we might be onto something now. Now our wind is just not good, so I think we might have to crawl from here. I want to say that almost has to be our guide there much darker than these two down here, but there is a two-star mature, and then more importantly, a four-star mature right down in this area. So we'll have to return to here eventually, but as for now, we may have to wait this out until he kind of walks down to the right, but I think we at least found the right sheep. We've had to go all the way out and around, but we have a pretty clear shot into there at the darker bighorn, so before he decides to move off, We'll go ahead and take that shot. We actually did a perk there. Is he missing a horn? It looked like he was, but he went down in a pretty good spot potentially for a photo. And again, the 308, getting to see how that does on Bighorn, it did a pretty good job in that case. Now, I will say, in terms of switching difficulty, I was able to sneak all the way around that lake, just crouching along and none of the bighorn looked our way despite the wind being a little bit subpar so i do kind of wonder if there is anything to that we shall see as we continue along but let's see we're sort of in the sun here at least a little bit Eh, would have been better if he fell on the other side but maybe we can make this work i mean kind of but i think this is going to be one that we have to take a look at in the trophy lodge as for this guy though oh he has that's interesting he has both horns in the harvest screen, but we actually managed to impact the heart with the bullet shockwave there. Obviously we know he is just the one star, 50% on the genetics, and I assume he just can't get any bigger than that as he is a mission animal, but pretty cool. We only lost 1.83 pounds of meat from that 308 shot, and we are definitely going to taxidermy that. There are two different multi-mounts in the lodge on one of the rock mounts, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do bighorn or mountain goat. But because of that, I think we're going to have to do the bighorn. Well, as per usual, I kind of just end up wandering around in the mountains for way longer than I think, and it's kind of starting to get dark out here. So that is a young whitetail buck with what looks to me to be really solid potential, but this one over here, probably not so much. So we're going to see if we can get this kind of odd angle shot with the 308. I'm curious to see how that actually does. And it looked like just as he was starting to go down that hill, he may have been beginning to stumble. So I'm glad we actually have something more to test before we go to the next day. There is a lot that's going to be going on once we rest to the morning. 
and I think it could potentially get chaotic enough that we lose track of actually trying to test this gun. And I've got to say, a very easy blood trail to follow, despite the fact that we are in relatively low light, so let's see if we made the right decision. Definitely though, at that angle, no big deal, sting along a little bit of liver damage as well, and still brought him down pretty quickly, despite the fact that we didn't even hit the far side lung at all. Now, this guy is a 67.75% genetic potential buck, so I think a good one to take out. We'll sell that. We'll go back to the main lodge, and of course there is a mission, which I'm trying to save for just streams, so we have to confirm through that as well. But let's go back then and rest, and we'll also mount our black bighorn. And it is nice to see him up there with both horns. I don't know what the deal with that was when he didn't have the one when we actually shot him. And this is a thing too in photo mode, sometimes like some of the fur is seemingly missing. But I think that's going to look good up there, hopefully, next to a 5-star Bighorn, maybe out of the same herd, if we can wait that out and see if he ages. But that is basically where the rest of this hunt is going to go. Now, it is currently about 7.30 a.m. I want to go out and see if we can take advantage of our morning time before Mule Deer start to drink. And that's where things could get a little interesting. There are no less than 5 4-star Mule Deer on this map right now, and because we just passed through another day, I want to go and check all those out, so we'll see if we can actually find them, we'll see if any of them have aged, and before we do that, we'll go and see if we can find anything just out here feeding prior to that drink time. Now this is not one of the herds that I've been watching the 4 stars in, but there actually is in here as well a 3 star, and this is where things can get kind of tough with species like Mule Deer. He obviously has a really solid set of antlers, and it's just tough to tell could he actually reach 5 stars or not, and I think we're going to leave him go for now. There is also in here a 1 star mature that definitely needs taken out, and I think there's another bug somewhere off to the right side that I'd like to get a better look at. And while we can't actually see the antlers, we can see he is a 2 star mature, and actually since that doe laid down we can see a little bit better, but I think that actually might be a good one to go ahead and take out, so again, Bit of an odd angle for the 308, but let's see how it does. Did we not get that same perk earlier? Apparently that was a really solid hit though. Pretty quickly he went to stumbling, and actually we should be able to watch exactly where he goes down, so shouldn't need any tracking here. It looks like he's going to be betting just about any moment now. And as we walk over there, let's see what that perk was, which I'm not sure how we unlocked twice, but gotta be one of these in here. Oddly enough, it is a lever action perk that we just unlocked, despite the fact that we were using a bolt action rifle, but we can tell looking up close here, this guy is not that great of a genetic buck, 55%. Completely uneven though, the front has a fork on the left side, the back has a fork on the right side, so a good one to take out. But to actually go and look at that is we have to double confirm that for that mission. If we go into the perks here, we apparently have 75 lung, heart, or artery hits with a lever action rifle, which makes it 25% faster to aim down sights, despite the fact that, again, we're using a bolt action rifle, and apparently it could be classed incorrectly or something like that, but no complaints, that'll help us out in some scenarios. So it is now a good bit after 9 o'clock in game, in fact we are past 9.30, and we're over here to check our first mule deer, and we can see the big one here is still a 4 star mature, but I'm kind of wondering if we need to take that shot anyway. There's two things, number one, he is fairly grey in color. It's tough to tell there, but the adult behind him is far more brown, and you can kind of see that lighter shade for his fur, so that's one thing to look for in trying to field judge the age of the animals. Now the really old mule deer tend to have kind of like some scarring in the center of the body, and I don't see any of that. but. The other thing that kind of makes me worry is that none of these other bucks are even remotely decent, which makes me wonder if the genetics in this herd are all that good, and I kind of wonder if this guy is at his peak. So at the risk of shooting a deer that could be a 5 star, I think we're going to take him and, and just try to learn here. Plus, we haven't gotten to shoot anything all that big on this hunt. so. Fingers crossed this isn't a mistake, if we see anything above probably like 88%, probably that guy would have made it eventually, but I've been watching him for quite some time, he's getting pretty grey, 
I think we got to take him and at least try to learn here. There are so many four stars on this map. If there's one species to experiment with, probably right now it's the Mule Deer. But once again with the 308, a pretty solid performance. I will say he's looking a little more brown up close, so that's kind of alarming. But this guy, which we double longed at 138 yards, actually I think we made the right move here. 87.46 on the genetic potential. Now, I have seen screenshots of animals roughly in that range being five stars. And it's so tough to tell like how far along in his life cycle he is, but to me, the fact that he was looking pretty gray, and by the way, in the harvest screen, it doesn't matter, they all seem to have the same fur. I kind of think that might have been a good move. I'm, I'm tempted to tax him. Almost told him, let's tax him, because I, I really, there's two things. For one, I don't know how, did we just cancel that, I think? I don't know what's going on, but it seems we have no choice but to activate this mission. I guess better now than when I'm not recording. So now we'll actually go ahead and tax him. And I guess harvesting doesn't require you to sell them, so that is interesting news, but there are two things that come to that. One, I just want to actually fill the trophy lodge a little bit more. The other is, there is actually a perk, interestingly enough, if we can find it, collector, 30% extended space for animal trophies when you've displayed 50 taxidermy animals in the lodge. So I kind of want to work on that. Taxidermying a nice four-star mule deer, even as a placeholder, will help with that. And now we'll be off to the other couple areas. And for the second time in a row, the four-star buck that we've come to check remains a four-star. Now, it's hard to see, he's kind of back in there, but I don't know, he looks a little bit gray. It's hard for me to describe, but he doesn't look as old. Now, there are some really encouraging genetics here, and I think that's why we're going to let this guy go. There's a three-star there, and I don't know if we can get him spotted. There's another three-star right up there by him. There's also right up here a two-star mature. And compared to that last herd, the genes are just much more promising, and I think it could be worth experimenting and letting him go. Kind of a better look here, actually. He may be just a touch kind of lighter than the three-star beside him, but I don't see nearly as stark a difference, so we're going to let him go. One more thing before we move on. If you go into the encyclopedia for Mule Deer, their maturity stage is quite long, 7 to 12, so six years of being a mature. I think that's going to be enough leeway to maybe let this guy go a little bit longer. So now we begin to make our way down to our last spot, which probably will not surprise you guys that it is the far southeast corner. Now, there's a tent right by that lake, but I find it's too close, I end up spooking stuff, so I run all the way down and around to try to get to a better vantage point. And when I purchased the 308, I decided to go and check that spot out, and it once again proved why it is such a good area. Well, one thing that is definitely for certain, this area in the southeast is absolutely insane. We've got another five-star mule deer out here, and this time, we're running with the 308. I just got a hold of it, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it does. So, I'd like him to stop, but I think if we can get him still broadside and maybe between these two trees, we'll probably go ahead and take the shot. You want to make sure they're well away from any kind of vegetation, because hitboxes can be pretty big. But that should be okay. Looks perfect. I mean, the amount of blood. And he went absolutely nowhere. I got to shoot one mountain goat with this. That's the second shot I fired. That is pretty darn impressive. Maybe a hard shot, and I probably can no longer even count how many times I've taken a shot with the closer leg forward, thinking that maybe that gave us a easier shot into the chest cavity and into the heart, but the amount of blood there, that actually may be the case this time. But look at the ivory tips on this guy's rack compared to the other one. They're almost non-existent. That is really, really cool to see. But this guy, not a heart shot, just double lung, although both lungs, apparently, I, I don't know exactly what the key kind of here is with the the red and the blood droplets but i assume that means that would be a lethal shot and i guess even both lungs despite the fact that we're a little bit below the recommended hit energy but this guy was an 89.51 percent that's gonna kind of warp my idea of five stars to be 100 percent honest so he is a 462 i think 460 is five star so 
maybe right about 90% then, that may round up, is what you're looking for. I've been thinking, you know, 85%, which I guess is kind of still accurate, is always going to be a 4 star when they reach their maximum potential. I generally hunt dawn to dusk every single day and then rest back to the next dawn. I gotta come back down here and check because there continue to be really nice mule deer, but that's number two and honestly, we're too low credits right now to even mount him, but I'm looking forward to getting him in the multi-mount as well. Now, I should probably clarify, that was prior to finding the three different force armatures that were down there last I checked. So that one's not being counted in there. There are three more to go and take a look at, and hopefully one of them is going to have reached that five star potential. Now, one of the things I like the most about Way the Hunter is the fact that even though you may have zones that are used often, you don't always get all the animals right back in there, and that seems to be the case today. We do have a four-star mature there, and I thought maybe back further in this herd was another decent buck that we haven't spotted yet. And in my opinion, both the four-star and this three-star over here are looking pretty old, they're looking pretty gray, so likely... We're going to end up taking the shot on the 4-star. Now, I want to wait, because as we can see, more deer are filing up into here. So I want to make sure there isn't anything better coming up through behind. But I definitely do not see three different 4-star bucks. And it could actually be the case that one of the 4-stars has just reached its peak age and died. So even though I wanted to kind of wait and see what would come up out of here still. And we do have a doe scooting across real quick. I kind of think we might need to go ahead and take the shot. These guys are getting a little farther away than I would like. We'll give it one last glance, but I don't want to end up having him escape and die of old age somewhere else. So when he gets out from behind this tree, and I guess that gives us one more opportunity to take a look. Now that actually is a nice buck. That is a... I can't get the thing to stay up. That is a four star as well. Now that looks a little more brown to me. So again, I think we'll leave him. And in that case, we want to go ahead and take this guy out. Wait. Which is which there? That one looked bigger. That's a four star mature. That's a three star. And then that, we almost shot the wrong buck entirely. That would have been a problem. So it is that one back in there then that we actually want to take out. Let's stand up so we can get maybe past a bit more of this brush. And I think this will be our opening to take the shot. I don't want to end up having our bullet strike something and him get away and possibly die of old age. So now we know we're looking at the right deer and you can see again, just how much lighter in color his back is. The problem is he is pretty well covered up by some other deer. I think we have room now. Look like we got him good. And it's going to be a mess of mule deer coming out of here. So if we can somewhat keep an eye on him, and I, I don't know where he went already, that would have been good. But I expect, given everything we've seen from the 308 today, Hilly should have gone down somewhat quickly. And again, I really do want to experiment with when to take four stars, when to pass them, and all that stuff. And the mule deer, because we have seen so many four stars, have definitely been the best species to try to learn with. So again, I'm hopeful that this one is in the 80s somewhere that is my guess and hopefully soon we can find out blood looks pretty good and i mean i didn't see him run up out of there so maybe he went down to the left that is definitely the one kind of negative of shooting a deer in among so many others it's hard to keep track of what's what not only did i end up having to go back and review the footage to see what direction he ran in i also walked right past him like five different times. The blood track here kind of indicates he's going up the hill. I didn't realize that he had slid down into this little area down here. And we'll see again. Like I said, that really light colored back would indicate to me a pretty old age. And definitely the angle we shot, I guess. Really, we did not have the amount of power I would have expected at 130 yards. We were a touch low. But you can see it was mostly the shockwave damage from the bullet that ended up killing that buck with the left lung shot but he was actually 77.86 percent on the genetics which is interesting to see honestly even one below 80 percent can end up being a really solid buck so his total score then 
was 419. That leaves him about 40 below the requirement for a 5 star. But I think we'll actually go ahead and tax me that as well. And on that note, we'll go back and place our 5 star mule deer as well as the other two 4 stars that we got from these couple areas out in here. And by the way, I remembered it just now as we walked up to that buck. I continue to forget to take trophy shots with our really good kills. I missed out on doing that with the 5 star mule deer. At least I guess we can do it in the lodge. So firstly, we'll add our second 5 star to this multi mount here. And we want to select the top one there, make sure we're doing that right and not spend 1800 credits for the wrong deer. And to look at it in here, you can see it a little bit. Maybe in the photo mode, we tried this last time and it didn't help a ton. But you can see the much lighter tips on all the tines than our original 5 star. Maybe if I change the time of day, we can even see it better. And I mean, you can see it, but I really would like if we could get better lighting in here. I mean, the windows, you would think we could, but still ends up being a little bit hard to see. But compared to that, you can see the much lighter coloration in the end of the time. So I really like that. As for our couple of four stars, I kind of want to start on some stuff in the lower level as well. And actually, I think this could end up working out pretty well. So there's two plaques side by side here, and we can do the mule deer shoulder mounts on them. I wish we could change the direction that they're facing. I don't think that's a thing, but we'll go ahead and place both of them for now. And that is way cheaper at 260 credits to actually taxidermy those. So not a big deal. You know, I'm not sure we could put a five star there. Those tines are getting pretty close to the bottom of that rock. So probably best we have the four stars for now. But we'll do the other shoulder mount, another 260 credits to do that. And just starting to fill this trophy lodge a little bit better. It is interesting. They don't appear to be exactly mirrored, which maybe is intentional, but I like that. Again, even with the four stars, very different racks, different shapes, and the one on our right has a lighter rack in general. The one on the left has a much darker rack with nice kind of light colored tips as well. But that's pretty cool to see. The antlers, when you see them on the hoof, it's not always as obvious just how different they are. When you get them in the lodge and can really pick apart those little details, it's pretty impressive what they've actually done, and I, I love how big the mule deer are. I'm really hoping one of those remaining four stars can become a five star. I'd love to complete this multi mount up here, but it was good to go around and get to check those things out. The 308 is a fantastic gun we've seen, and I'm looking forward as well to that bighorn. One last thing before we wrap up here if we go into the maturity range for bighorn, they have a pretty decent length. 9 to 12, so about 4 years in there where they can potentially grow. I'm hoping that guy can get a little bit bigger and reach to that 5 star. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so we'll have to check that in a future one. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.